You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Good morning. Hello. Alan Aguirre, host of the Chameleon Church Show, coming to you live and direct from the Wasatch back of northern Utah. We are about to enter, in March, our sixth year. March is our anniversary of doing this show, and it's six years old. And I remember asking myself when we started this show, how the heck am I going to wake up every Tuesday morning and do this? How am I going to do that? That's quite the commitment. Well, here we are. Look at this. We gotta, I mean, While I'm talking to you, I'm going to fix this. Always, There's always an issue with this app and Facebook. Um, and so uh, here we are, six, going into our sixth year. We just this, March is our sixth year anniversary. Um, hard to believe, but yes. And it doesn't look like anything when we started doing it. This is a totally different thing, different format. Um, the whole nine yards. The premise, the name, the network. Remember that? Remember those? Remember that? Remember that train wreck? Oh, yeah. Um, man on fire. Boy, if you ever wondered how strong, how deceptive, and how seductive the anti-Semitic spirit was, well, we found out over the weekend. I, th- I, 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 I went back and forth on whether I should show you the clip. The, apparently, Muppet Boy filmed himself um, walking down, you know, explaining that he was uh, an active enlisted airman and he no longer wanted to be complicit with genocide. What an idiot. And, uh, I mean, it's one thing to die for a cause, but, but you don't die for a false narrative, okay? You don't die for a false propaganda. Apparently you do. It's called the Third Reich. A whole bunch of Germans did. Jeez. But... He filmed himself, you know, um, lighting, lighting himself on fire, yelling "Free Palestine!" <laughs> uh, and he's but in front of the embassy in D.C., the Israeli embassy in D.C., suggesting that the U.S. government was involved with genocide, and as an, uh, an, an as an enlisted man, he wanted nothing to do with it. So he lit himself on fire. And so I decided, you know what, I, I, I'm not going to show it because it's who, who, no one needs to promote such demonic seduction. If you've ever wanted to know how strong the anti-Semitic spirit is, it's an ancient one, that's how strong it is. It is so strong, it will seduce you into lighting yourself on fire for a false narrative, for a fake cause, for a fake country and a fake people group oh my gosh you know what yeah free palestine from hamas and i'll say it again as soon as you guys let our people go and stop throwing rockets at us and they were doing that this morning they were throwing rockets this morning you let the rest of the hostages go it's been 20 plus weeks give us back the rest of our hostages stop throwing rockets we might consider a ceasefire you have to remember we were under a ceasefire when they did what they did. <sighs> a lot of stupid people out there. And you know what? There's a lot of stupid people. I, I mean, there's. I, I even posted a new meme out there uh, in, in honor of this guy. Uh, like it's some sort of badge of honor. <laughs> Stupidity has no bounds. If you believe, if, if, you're in, if you're binding to this whole free Palestine thing, you're a special kind of stupid because you literally don't even know what's going on. You have no idea of what's actually happening, and you don't even want to know. There's two sides to every story, Alan. Okay. Cheers. Good morning, guys. How you doing this Tuesday morning? Good morning. Good morning. Crazy, huh? Crazy stuff. Nothing, nothing. You guys, you guys got nothing? All right. Well, good to see you guys. We'll see you next week. 
<laughs> I don't know if I. I mean, it's very sad. It's very sad. It's crazy. I I just I mean that's. You either have a lot of courage or you're just totally deceived, right? But like I, 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 I want I want to equate courage with nobility, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. If I go, man, I'm gonna. You know what? I believe so strongly that yeah, this is the Lord's will. I need to light myself on fire. How do I light myself on fire? Do I light my coat sleeve first? The hat? Oh man, like that, it's, it's another level where your your brain has gone, or been assimilated or taken over like you know what i'm saying right where you're like oh this is a good idea and then actual i mean it's demonic right i mean yeah completely cl completely demonic i'm gonna take a lighter and then put my coat sleeve on it yeah he was having a, he was he was struggling lighting that lighter it took him a little while to to ignite <laughs> my god oh you know that's the best thing. That's the best thing about about our God. He'll let you do whatever the hell you want. That, the ancient hatred for God is just it's it's always been people. there, but now it's it's touching every nation. You know, here we're concerned about our southern border. Of course, we we live here, but around the world, it's just focusing on their hatred for israel and look what biden just did and i this is what terrifies me mr old man just declared all the settlements illegal to live in by what right does he have that but you know what he's doing by doing that he's cursing us yeah he's cursing us uh last time bush got in that problem we saw what happened with katrina and they say, oh, that's just a coincidence. There's no coincidence. And uh, even though Netanyahu rejected it, he says, well, no, we're about. Netanyahu just said there were there are three weeks out of taking, is it Rafa? Uh, and, and literally wiping out the last stronghold of Hamas. And he says, we're not going to have anything of what Biden says. And so it's just, it's ramping up even more you watch what happens these next few weeks and there's a push because boy his politic he, he he's scrambling he's scrambling like a rat a rat that can't find his hole and um that's where we got to pray real hard for our country that the lord doesn't allow that to happen because hmm, interesting well I mean, after what happened last time, I'll be very surprised if we have an actual free election this year. I, I don't see it happening. I'm, 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 I'm seeing this getting actually worse. That would be the tipping point, I think, and um, it would throw everything and everybody over the top if we don't have an, a proper election this year. Again, we have to understand that the God of this, the, the prince of this world is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Yeah. And we should not be surprised by what we're seeing. I'm just fascinated that, I just, humans fascinate me. And the fact that they're doing what they're doing and they're saying what they're saying and what's happening is happening, that they're allowing what's happening to happen, it just blows my mind. It's like, wow. It's crazy, crazy stuff. You, you know, not to get off the subject, but there's so many portends right now that <clears throat> I've had a couple of questions asked by different, some of my different family members. They go, well, what about, you know, everybody sees it. What about this eclipse? I go, well, it's just a wait and see thing. I go, if you try to attribute it to something and uh, make it specific for America, you're missing it. I go, it's a sign. I mean, you just had the largest X flare go off four days ago. Every 11 years, the sun flips its poles and it's about ready to do that. And all this is going to converge in April, right around Passover. And all these things, they're just signs. They're, they're telling us of things that 
Even the heavens are declaring their chaos in the heavens. And it's coming to earth. He says, he told us, he goes, you've got to know the season here and you've got to know what these things are. The danger is, is that you get every, every mother and a son on YouTube saying, well, this is that and this is that. And every uh, little state in the United States that this, this um, <clears throat> solar eclipse is going to go through, it has a Nineveh in it. So doesn't that mean this is a Jonah code? I go, oh, stop it. You know, what it means is that the heavens are declaring something and we just got to watch and see. And if you look at it in the big picture of the scripture, the one thing that's always true is that if there is a, a solar eclipse, the the common knowledge of the sages was is that that nation's going to go to war. Whether it's uh, more intrinsically emotional, spiritually or physically, it's going to go to war. It's already in war. So there's so many things right now that people are going, yeah, it's like you said, we should be able to see this. And it's the story of redemption that's about ready to unfold because he's saying, you know, wake up, everybody. Here I am. Guess what? I'm coming. Yeah. And that's why we talk about this stuff, because it's. It's all staging. We're being prepared for yes. what's to come. What's been, what the ancients told us about. Man, oh man. You know, not to get off the subject. You know, I heard something the other day. I never, I never knew this. You probably knew this, Alan. I didn't know that. What's that? It's just, you know, just going through Zechariah and, you know, the two lamp stamps that were feeding the oil to the menorah. And uh, I heard one of the teachers say, he goes, you know, there's something very interesting here that ties us into the fact that we who have been grafted in are tied somehow to this. And they said, well, who are these branch stamps? Are they who, what are these lampstands and what, what is this oil? Where is it from? He goes, don't you know these are the ones that stand beside the Lord of the whole earth and they feed? And he brought up the issue with Elijah and Moses. I didn't realize again that Elijah was a Gileadite. He was a foreigner. Elijah wasn't a Hebrew. And it's interesting what was represented there if you have Moses... And you have Elijah, who was a foreigner. You look at Romans 11 and being grafted in. And a thought crossed my mind. I go, you know, it never does say that Moses died. You know that? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It just says that Michael contended over his body. And it doesn't tell you what happened to it. Yeah. Yeah. There's but a, it was taken. I'm going, huh. Thing there. And it made my juices start flowing. Well, here's what's interesting, because I still think a couple, two or three years ago, we brought this up again not that long ago, I, uh, I felt this word, and I was able to associate it with the act. We were actually in the time frame of the, of the prophecy. Remember we were talking about that, and was it in Haggai or something like that? It was in that mm -hmm. area. And it talked about how we, we had to get our house in order, and then I'm like... Because we were talking about COVID, and, and we were talking about how God knew this was, this was going to happen. So then where are we prophetically based on this? And that's when I realized, oh, it's September. We're, it's literally in the next day or two, this date is going to pop up. And it was all about us having to get our house in order. It was after uh, the, you know, Nehemiah's wall and all that. And then I'm like, where does this continue? If we continue down this road, where does it eventually take us? And we kind of, and it kind of fizzled out. We didn't really follow up on it or anything like that. And it's popped up in my mind a few times because I think we're supposed to kind of know. I think we're supposed to pay attention to it, and we haven't. And you just brought it back up because it was heading towards the prophecy or the vision of uh, was it Joshua the priest? And they put clothes, clean clothes on him and everything. That's right. They took the dirty the, garments off. And they put right. The clean and then it clothes. has, then it talks about the branch and it talks about the two lampstands. 
that are the same two lampstands in Revelation. Right. So you're bringing it up again. It, it hit me. I looked at Linda. We were on the couch. We saw that. She goes, I never saw that. And then that thing about Moses came up going, you know, it doesn't say he died. And it, I guess what was stirring in me is I'm going, those two lampstands are pouring some oil out right now. And the kingdom of heaven is getting ready. And again, I'm just of that mind. I'm going Passover this year. If yeah. and it's it's like when he came the first time, they did not recognize it. Mm -hmm. And here, all this stuff is lining up, and they go, they, they think that it's going to be dramatic when we come into that 70th week of Daniel. You're not going to know it. All you're going to know by the fact is he goes, I'm 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 yelling, and you don't see. Yeah. Corn corn years ago, I think when he was still going to Cyprus, he goes, uh, you know, Moses made it into the promised land i'm like what are you talking about he goes mount of transfiguration he was in the land i'm like yeah, you're right um we should probably take a look at that that those passages and uh it was talking about the priest joshua the priest right Yes. And they just give him a new clean clothes, a new turban. And uh, he asked what these two things were. Those were the two lampstands. It talked about the branch, you know, the netzer. We should probably take a deeper look into that and see what it is that the Holy Spirit is talking about because it keeps coming up. In it, the last it's... handful of years, it's come up three or four times, and we didn't follow, I didn't, I didn't follow through with, with where it went. To determine, do you remember it? Remember all that, you guys? It was sparked from a conversation I was having with with Chris, and it was and it came up recently, and we found it in band, and we I, shared I remember the word. it. Yeah, we just shared the word. Uh, that was a few months ago. It was long ago. So we need to go back to that. We I think we need, we need to go back, maybe do a, our own studying, and then reconvene on what it is the Holy Spirit's trying to say, or wanting to say, or possibly saying. You, you, you know, what he said since it's in the back. It's in the past. You know, it was prompted by that Torah portion this weekend. Tetzavah, where it says, "Come and bring the pure oil," mm -hmm. and the pure oil is where, where it gets crushed, but the skin doesn't go into it, which would be the defilement. And I'm going, well, that's all of us, man. We've been pressed, and we have, you know, through our lives, we we all have a testimony of where we've been pressed, but the whole world's getting pressed right now. Mm -hmm. And those that come out without the skin being ripped off of them are those that are going to be obedient to Torah. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just having that pure oil, you know, just saying, okay, Lord. And yet. It's, it, it, it's a timely thing right now to look at that. I'm going, there's just so much. I got so many questions in my heart just wanting to dig into it because it all ties back into Romans. It all ties back in to the covenants and the promises. <clears throat> yeah. And being to, grafted in. I need to finish this uh, field manual and I, and I'm, I'm close. I'm close, closer than I was two months ago. Um, so I can concentrate on that Romans teaching. I just can't do it all myself. That's the only reason why it's slowed down. But um, yeah, cause it's, I think it's, it's important information, content, and and I want it out. I want it, I want to get it out this year. Hmm. Um, let I'll. I found it in band. I'll. I guess I'll have to find it again. Send it to the both of you, and then we can all go go look and see what the Lord might be saying, then we'll, we can chat about it and then talk about it here. Sounds good. Hmm. Crazy. We're, we're, uh, my, my calendar's starting to make it's March. We're talking March already. 
How is this happening? Just a few days away. You got anything, Chris? Uh, I have something for you oh. if we want to pivot. Yeah, we can. There's a lull. If the, uh, if, if the spirits wants us to come, you know how he'll do it. He'll bring us yeah. all back around. I was reading Luke 11 this week. And something popped to me that I hadn't considered. It's the last. It's towards the end. Hold on, let me find it. Luke 11, you said? Yep. Um, there's some things I'm asking God for in prayer and going after some promises in Scripture. Um, let's start in verse 9. I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be open. But Father among you, uh, what Father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, <laughs> no. <laughs> I like how Jesus just does that. I, and, he's, and he's talking to his disciples. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. He's, and this is like kind of the, you know, the meme of, not the meme, the cliche. As in the physical, so in the super, you know, spiritual. Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So you got a couple things going on, right? It, later in John 15, 16, whatever, he's talking about the promise of the Holy Spirit. The counselor is going to come. He's saying he will come. But here he's implying that the Holy Spirit's available now. And then the other thing I'm noticing is how much more he will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. So it's it's saying this where evangelical Christianity tradition is confess with your mouth and all Christians have the Holy Spirit. But then Jesus saying, you're asking for the Holy Spirit. So I just thought, oh, that's a good prompt for us. You know, another way, uh, saying another way that it's saying things that we talk about a lot on this show, but I just, I'd never, I'd never, it never popped out to me like before. This is actually Jesus. We we know the Holy Spirit was around in Old Testament times, but so it's more like a, a counter thread or a text against the narrative in evangelical Christianity that says the Holy Spirit isn't for today, or you can do life without the Holy Spirit, or we all have it, or speaking in tongues isn't for today. So I just thought that was interesting. What do you guys think? Can you read again now that you've said all that? Yes. Now back uh, for everyone who asks, receives. Okay, where so where under, are you? You're in Luke 11, right? Luke 11. Let's start with verse nine. So I was thinking of it for from prayer and like claiming the Lord's promises. The Lord has goodness stored up for those who fear him, like those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find knock and it'll be open to you now let's think about that verse in reference to the holy spirit for everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks it will be opened what father among you if his son asks for a fish will instead of a fish give him a serpent he's talking about the goodness of a good father the the father the even that the heavenly earthly or the earthly father wants to bless his kids you know what i'm saying 
If he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion? No. If you then, who are evil, even those of you who don't believe I am the Messiah, it, this, this illustration still makes sense, right? You, you don't have to be walking with Yeshua to want to bless your kids. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Wait, we're talking about the Holy Spirit? I, I just, I just, he's setting him up in this whole passage yeah. for the Holy Spirit. And I just, what do you guys think? There's this horrible, horrible testimony. And he, he, he went public with it too, which was really weird. He was at a Cornerstone Festival and was hanging out. It was like, I guess he was 15 at the time. And he was at Cornerstone Festival hanging out with some charismatics and, and and he got swept up with the the unction, right? What's that song? Give me his ass from my floor. No, 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 right? Uh, give me unction, unction, unction. Isn't that part of the lyric? Yeah. So he was, he was spontaneously speaking tongues. Is that what you're no, saying? No, no. But he was no. he was he was swept up with the you know all the feels. Yeah. And that, that's a new term these days, huh? all the feels. It wasn't a term 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Anyway, so he was swept up with, he was hanging out with these charismatics at Cornerstone. So they're probably around a fire and singing Kumba, stinking ya, and, uh, you know, speaking in tongues and all that. And he got swept up and, uh, you know, he got all about it. And so he, 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 he wanted it. He wanted uh, to be spirit-filled and speak in tongues like they were and all that. And I guess he cried himself and you know prayed and cried all night long to get it and he didn't get it and he was really frustrated with himself because there was your first mistake oh it didn't happen the first time i asked right and so he got really frustrated and so like the next day or two one of the some le some other leader not a part of this charismatic group but obviously a non-charismatic leader told him that it was wrong for him to rile himself up like that for it and if god wanted him to have it god would just give it to him and the guy's in his 50s and he never once pursued it again from that day from that time on and so he's grown up without it he's the he's, the power go ahead yeah, we've been, it's been a theme the last few weeks, authority in our words, but that just shows the power of a leader, positive or negative, to yeah. shut someone down or turn them on. Yeah, so this, this speaker took him aside and told him he was wrong and in, 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 in being preoccupied with it and wrong for wanting it so badly and wrong for, I think, you know, for going for it and that if God wanted, wanted him, he would get it. And that was, he was 15 that, that summer. This is all public. He posted all this. And now he's in his 50s. He's in his mid to late 50s. He's never spoken in tugs. He doesn't have any, nothing. He's not charismatic. In fact, he's a Christian left. He's one of those guys in the Christian music industry. He's someone I would never take spiritual advice from, ever. But this is what happened to him. And that's his testimony. And it's heartbreaking. And it's horrible because this is normal this is happens more than the other version of what we're talking about he didn't seek he didn't ask he didn't right paul said to to, to pursue paul, paul talks about going hard after these things this muppet of a pastor whoever he was youth group leader or whatever railroaded this guy by telling him that he was wrong in wanting it and in wanting it that bad to be distraught over not getting it. Yeah, that's a little weird, but you know, he's 15. He's emotional. He's a, he's a kid. What does he know? But because no one could, no one managed it. No one discipled him. And I, you know, I remember when I first started trying to speak in tongues, I couldn't do it. It took me a while. But I was around those that were going to walk me through the process, you know, um, Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible what's happened 
to Christendom in the last 40 years, 50 years regarding these things. And it's, it's so vital. It is so absolutely vital to a healthy, well-balanced, rounded out walk. Because have you noticed those that don't or can't have a very skewed view of the, of the Bible, of the scriptures? And Israel, a lot of them. It's like there's a it's a demographic, it's literally a demographic, and they all have this other spirit, see. And this other spirit is tolerant, liberal, you know, a lot of them. A lot of them. I mean, we both know a lot of conservative Christians that aren't charismatic, obviously. But the enemy has done a number on the church for so many people in the church. I mean, charismatic is, charismatics are maybe, what, 15? Maybe 18% of the demographic? That's, that's nothing. But then think about it. At the end of the day, a people group that, was, that were started supernaturally by God through two Gentiles, Abram and Sarah, with the prime directive to usher in Messiah for the rest of the planet, when the smoke cleared after killing their own Messiah, there was only 120 of them, waiting anticipantly for power on high. Those aren't good numbers. Out of, an, out of an entire nation that was created for that sole purpose. 120 of them. That's it. That's why, if you're in the majority, you should probably reevaluate your life. <laughs> Every single time. Music, art, theology, doctrine. God's never been in the majority. Think about that. When was God in the majority? And the last time Israel functioned like one man, the last two times Israel functioned as one man was stay at home, put, put, put blood over your doorways, stay at home, don't go outside. And they did, it says. They function as one man that night. The next time was over a thousand years later, something like 1,200 years later, when they did uh, <coughs> tabernacles, when they did Sukkot for the first time with Nehemiah and Ezra the priest, post-Babylon. They said they hadn't done uh, Sukkot like that since the days of Joshua of Nun, which was, what, 12, 1,800 years later? Wow. Yeah. Those were the last two times Israel did it collect as a community collectively obeyed God. And there's a what 800, 1200, whatever. I, it's, I wrote it down, whatever the amount of time was in the field, field manual. And it was, and there was a lot of sp space in between. Oh, oh, and the last time they did something collectively was Barabbas, give us Barabbas. Think about that. Uh, so, is it any wonder? Sorry, um, that Christianity would fall into step with with those type of things, and and that we would be so wrong about so many things collectively when it comes to ch as a, to a church. But then again, there's a difference. There's a difference between the church. Here's something Christianity won't teach you. There's a difference between being the church and being the bride. Those are two distinct, different things. In the same way, there's a water baptism for salvation, and then there's a baptism of Holy Spirit for power and supernatural stuff. Those are two separate, distinct, exclusive, two separate things. Well, the church and the bride, two exclusively different things the majority are the church and the remnant is the bride and they're charismatic Torah observers according to the John the Apostle in the Revelation and so our numbers are going to be really small because for some reason God has us equipping that remnant on how to be charismatic Torah observers how the hell did we find ourselves here? <laughs> how did this happen? This is not my beautiful, how did I get here? 
Oh, my goodness. Look at the language that uh, Jesus was using when he was telling his disciples. It wasn't just a sermonizing language. He says, do you really think my father would give him a scorpion? Um, do his word study on scorpions. And then if you look what happens right after that, he's talking about when an individual gets inhabited by demons. And he's talking about the authority and the power that you really have. And, you know, a lot of times we just read through that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the ch churches, the pastors just read through that and see the Lord just wants to show you how many good gifts he wants to give you. He's going, if you don't have this, you will be subject to demonic influence. Wow. And you won't know how to deal with it. So, And you won't necessarily know it's demonic. That's right. And remember, in, in another uh, gospel, he goes into the fact of what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. So this is not one of those milk toast type conversations he's having with his disciples. He goes, you idiots. I'm not. My father will not give a scorpion. He's not going to whip you with those things. He's going to give you his Holy Spirit that speaks of the father and my power and my authority. I know I'm kind of passionate on that, but it's the context of this thing when yep. you look at it. Just and, to help us out. And there's rules of engagement in getting it. Right. Right. Yeah, you're so right. I was just reading that again, right before you said that. Like the the very next sentence is and then there was a demonic man. Like Yeah, right, but, 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 right after it. <laughs> And then like the, but yeah, I, I had not, I had never read that passage. I'd always, I, I don't know how I've always missed that line. Hmm. Cause you, you, I've, I've, I've talked about the fish versus scorpion bread versus, or, you know, bread versus stone, you know, but like he's saying he's, if he's setting it up for the Holy spirit, he is saying, you would think this weird stuff, this supernatural is there to harm you like a scorpion. And he's saying, no, actually don't fear. I know it's, he's maybe he's saying it looks weird. You're not used to it. It's kind of freaky. You don't understand it, but trust me, it's not going to sting you. It's, it's good for you. Yeah. yeah. He's saying it's good for you. Keep going. Don't give up. Be patient. Keep, keep pursuing it. Yeah. Hmm. It's not meant to harm you. What others, right. what other, what I intended for, what others intended for evil, right? I, I, I intend for good. He, so he's even speaking to the bad theology or the distortions or then, spirit, or spiritualism. Yeah. Yes, because there's spiritualism everywhere, dude. Back around, around there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's why he takes them to what is it? That cave of uh, Pan or whatever, where he says the gates of hell and. You know, at the base of Mount Hermon, I mean. Right. Romans are there. You're going to tell me Romans weren't doing their thing in the land? Hmm. Is that when uh, Legion comes running down the mountain towards them? No, it's... Uh, it's uh... That's later. That's that's always an amazing one. That's how we need to be right. Legion is in full force running down the mountain to attack him. And when he gets within proximity, he falls and worships. Yep. It, it's, a, it's the one where he says, now he was casting out a demon that was mute. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's like walking by, took, you know, water found. I'll take a little drink. You know, it's like nonchalant. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, Demon, mute. Yeah. I guess he's even speaking to the twistedness of it there because it's, uh, they're saying um, he casts out demons by Beelzebul. Yeah. So he they, he's casting out in the power of his father and the Holy Spirit and they're attributing it to something else. They're trying to twist it up. Yep, it's demonic. Yep. Totally. And that's and, and I and I've shared 
many times I've ha I have that experience of, in the you know, a miracle or a healing or something like that, and they and they call me a, a warlock, because they don't have a reference. And these are Christians, mind you. They don't have a reference experience that God does that because they've been told that God doesn't do that. And so if that does happen, it can't be God. And if it was God, they would be able to do it too, and they can't. So this guy, he's not one of us. He's, he's bad. I, I get that all the time. Ecuador, 1982. I'm 18 years old, and I was working with the, uh, the art community, uh, playing drums, commercials, TV commercials, live stage plays, and... There's this big, huge thing. Anyway, I was working with, and then another group of people, um, they were called the, the, the Diablo Brothers, the Devil Brothers, because they had a lot of red in their face, you know, in, in the pigmentation. Uh, it was a whole family band. They were on RCA International. And the youngest sister, she was maybe a year older than me, we became friends because, you know, we're, we're about the same age, 18. And um, so we're doing this play. Uh, it was like... It was the, like the Philharmonic Orchestra of, of Ecuador or whatever. Um, and it, it was uh, all Hollywood uh, top shows, you know, movie shows, uh, sound, you know, theme songs for movies. And, we were, and I was playing percussion. And she was one of the singers with her brothers. They're, they're, you know, they're all older. The brothers are in their 30s and stuff. Anyway, so we're in the wings um, waiting for this next scene, and she doubled over in pain. It wasn't the appendix. I go, what's wrong? And she goes, oh, I just, I get this pain. I'm like, oh, yeah? So I just kind of, I didn't even really touch her. I just kind of put my hand up against where the area was. And she was in shock and, like, freaked out because she was immediately and instantly <coughs> healed. And she was, like, terrified. She's like, oh, my God. And the brothers come running up, obviously. <laughs> the big old brothers come running up. They wanted to beat me up. And I had to calm them down that, no, I wasn't a witch. The bruja, brujo, you know, they were calling me a witch. No, I'm not a witch. I just laid hands on her and prayed for her in the name of Jesus, which they know because Catholics. And they were like amazing. And they looked at her and she goes, I'm, she goes, I'm fine. I'm healed. He didn't hurt me. He didn't do anything to me, but I'm healed. And it was just startling and scared me. So they were, you know, so they backed off. And um, a few days later, they asked me to come by their house. Would you please come to our house for lunch? Because our mother is sick in bed. I'm like, sure. So I'm at their house, and it's funny because the TV commercial, we're watching TV waiting and just hanging around. And I'm, the music for the TV commercial, I'm on drums, and she's the girl in the jeans commercial. So it's, you know, that kind of weird thing. And then they said, okay, you, would you come and see our mom? She's in the, sure. So they led me into the bedroom. There she was, and you know, said hello to her. I prayed for her, and 30 minutes later, she came out healed. But it's always interesting to me how the super, immediately how the supernatural is immediately connected to the demonic in people's reference experience because they don't have a Holy Spirit reference, Christian or non-Christian, U.S. or third world. They don't have a reference. One, they've been taught that, it does, that it does not, it's not even real. And that if there is something real in the supernatural stuff like that, it's demonic. It's witchcraft. Because they've never been taught that God has a Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and that the Ruach HaKodesh does this, and that the demonic is just a counterfeit of that. But because they don't have a reference for the real thing, it must be the bad thing. Because, again, like the whole Israeli uh, Hebrews in the desert with Moses, God is with all of us. He's with all of us, right? They believe that. So if this is really something that's uh, a thing, I would be a part of it. I would have it too because I'm, I'm one of God's people. God's, God's with me. And that's what the Pharisees said. The Pharisees couldn't do what the prophets of old could do. Jesus could. But he's not one of us, and we can't, so it can't be God. Because if it was God, I'd be able to do it. And that's that arrogance and their ignorance. Israel had it. Pharisees had it. Christianity has it. So if they can't do it, then it can't be real. 
and God forbid Alan actually has a, <laughs> an in with this thing because then that means Alan might be right about what he's also saying about this other stuff and there's no way that can be possible because be right back perfectly this time so in the same way confessing with your mouth that um, I'm not under the law is you're confessing I'm not under God's covenants that's not the confession you want to come out of your mouth I'm not under God's covenants yes we know that you probably shouldn't confess that though <laughs> should probably change you should probably repent and come under God's covenants in the same way suggesting that oh you know when it comes to the spiritual gifts when it comes to charismatica oh that's not for today god doesn't do that today you're basically saying god's power his manifest power through holy spirit isn't for today god doesn't manifest in power today i mean that's what they're literally saying that's what they're confessing see it, you might be thinking oh no no i'm talking about this but i'll guarantee you what i just explained is what the is what the spirit realm is hearing the spirit realm isn't hearing, I'm not under the law. They're hearing, I'm not under God's covenants. And now you're, 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 you're fodder. They're going to come at you, and they're going to come at you strong. Well, if you also believe and say with your mouth and confess with your mouth as a, quote, believer that, oh, God doesn't manifest, and doesn't manifest his power in the earth realm today. He doesn't do that. That's not for today. God's manifest power in the earth realm isn't for today. That's what they're saying. That's what the spirit realm is hearing. They're not hearing, oh, you know, the spiritual gifts aren't for today. They're hearing what, the other thing. And once again, that's putting yourself on the wrong side of the line. You're, you're on the wrong side of, of God's historical spiritual line drawing, and they're going to come at you. And, and I've said this before, in the same way, I think one of the reasons why young marriages fail so frequently in the church is because the guy, he just wants to have sex with his girlfriend. That's why he's going to get married, right? I mean, there's, there's, there's that, there's, there is that dynamic involved. Please don't, don't say, don't believe that that's not true. Come on. We're all adults here. What they're not understanding is that they're telling the spiritual realm that I am ready to make the transition to graduate from disciple to high priest. He doesn't know that's what he's saying. <laughs> He has no idea that that's what he's just signed up for. I, as a disciple, am ready to take on the spiritual responsibility of another soul other than my own. What? 
again, they didn't tell you that's what marriage was about. And they didn't tell you that that's what you're going and getting involved with when you want to get married. You are saying that I am mature enough and spiritual enough and I understand enough of what's going on that I want to take the responsibility of this other soul under my, my care. And so, since, right, so what happens? They get married, honeymoon, right? And then the, whole, and then the enemy comes at them, man, because the enemy's thinking, oh, high priest, and he doesn't know anything about being a high priest. He doesn't know anything about covering. He doesn't know anything about covenant. He doesn't know anything about what he's doing. And do you think the enemy is going to? No. They're going to do exactly what they do, and they're going to come in and chop them off at the knees because if they can destroy not only that marriage and that relationship but and that, and, and that covenant, because right, they're all about breaking covenant, and marriage is the only covenant we've been given or allowed in this earth realm unto death. It's the only unto death covenant in our earth realm. In fact, we're not even allowed to make covenants like that. This is the only covenant that is unto death. And the enemy's like, if I can destroy him, if I can destroy her, if I can break that covenant, I got him. Because I, because I will destroy their lives. And make, and because if they can get a divorce, and the enemy knows the rules of divorce better than Christians do. Because if, that, if they go, if they break up and there's no sexual immorality or infidelity and they go and remarry, they're both adulterers now. See, it's, just a, it's an amazing domino effect. People don't think like this. I don't know, I don't understand that. I don't understand why or how people aren't able to think like this. They're just thinking, I think she's hot. I want to be with her. And I'm going to get married. And then, I mean, they're, they're not, there's, people don't understand what they're doing. Humans don't understand what they're doing. And so you can be married for 30 years and your wife walks out on you and your kids hate you. And if you don't see that you had anything to do with that, I can't help it. I've been saying for decades, the man, the end, the, the end result of your marriage and your children is on you, man. I've been saying that since my kids were in, were kids, single digits. I knew that. And it put the fear of God in me, and so I needed to figure out somehow, some way I needed to figure out how to get these kids to a place where they were, they knew who the Lord was, and then now it's on them, between them and the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I can only do so much for so long, and that's just the way it's supposed to be. You, your son, and your son's son, Deuteronomy 6. And I, they have to somehow... Figure, you know, I have to somehow lead them to the place where they can make that decision on their own. And, 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 and end up, you know, till death do our, do us part. <laughs> oh, this sucks so bad. <laughs> it does. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking. We know so many people that are. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just thinking six, seven guys in my like oh i know a friend of a friend of a friend. like in my immediate circle that were at the churches in the bands at the camps speaking in tongues who whose marriages are now are gone and then you see the destruction on the kids so here i guess here's my question i don't disagree with you i'm not saying that i'm saying now what what's the hope like what what okay that's happened and if there was a complete change of heart or repentance or confession what is there a way forward lenny like what well here here's the difficult what, road what, here's the thing okay let's say okay i don't know the specifics uh, like for example if they're divorced was there sexual immorality involved with the divorce or did they illegally divorce themselves as believers 
All right. So now the guy has to take a hard, hard look at himself. Okay, I did not get divorced biblically, which means I cannot remarry. And so I'm going to have to stay single. And then what, what can he do? Now, what he should have been doing all along, he can still fight in the spiritual realm for that marriage, for his wife to come back, for reconciliation. I hate divorce. I'd rather you reconcile, even for sexual immorality. But if you can't, then I give you permission to, to, to divorce. But if there isn't that, in, you know, but even if there is. So let's say there isn't to make it easier. That guy should, that, that guy, the guy has to go with the, 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 the teaching of Jesus regarding divorce. And that's he can't remarry. Because that would make him an adulterer. So then he needs to stay single and, and, and fight for his wife and his family. And then if she goes and divorce and gets married, that's still questionable whether he can or not. Because again, the premise is, was there infidelity in the marriage? If there wasn't, he cannot remarry. But we see them people doing that all the day. That's what you do. That's the biblical course of action. No one's going to do it, though. That's where I always got in trouble. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it once. Yeah, Six, very I, rare. I, had a, I, have a, I had a friend who's, he was a pastor, and his wife had an affair. And they just, they just timed out. They just... He backed out for a season, and he had that conviction, like, I'm not giving up. And it was a rocky, rocky year, but their church united around them, and now they're thriving. Their kid, all their kids love the Lord, and they're in, they're in ministry together, and it's just created this incredible. But I've only seen it once. Yeah. You know, Chris, you said the magic word there. It's called conviction. <clears throat> because in the beginning, when you first asked the question concerning the Holy Spirit and the giving of the egg and the scorpion and the good gifts, I, I don't know if all what we call Christians have the Holy Ghost. We just don't assume it because you call yourself a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. Because nope. Jesus said, if you do... There will be a conviction where you'll where you're where you're gonna know righteousness, sin, and judgment. And um, what Alan was talking about always got me in trouble because from the days when I was in Burbank, and one of the guys that helped lead me to the Lord, missionary to China, took his wife over there. They did sign language, specialized ministry. Met another Chinese girl over there and divorced his wife. And I said, no, you can't do this. He came to my door. He says, I don't care if I go to hell. I don't love her. I, I, and to this day, I says, well, I got to reject that. I can't have fellowship with you. Power, right. power words. And you know what? To this day, there's still this animosity he has. I love him. I, you know, these guys, the Bogarts. I, we got the nastiest letter of our life when I said, you guys need to repent. Don't you ever, this was written to my wife, ever try to give us counsel or advice again. And I said, oh, and you know how many people that affected in that little Park City church? Because we had to stand that ground. And it's not gotten me in trouble. I have to stand before the living God. And, but... I don't think people have the Holy Ghost. I really don't. And I can say that with clarity because there's no conviction. And you want to know what? Jesus, eh, we're going to go into this. This is where I want Alan to jump in on this one with me in the next couple of weeks. Is He says the big issue, right what we're coming into, is all the false prophets. And I'm telling you, they're not outside the church. They're in the church. They're the ones that are saying, no, you don't have to obey the law. That's a false prophet. Yeah. They're the ones that say you don't have to have the Holy Spirit. That's actually That's the a definition of a false prophet. Oh, and they're the ones that are saying, oh, you know what? You don't got to worry about it. He's going to come in the desert and he's going to come and get you before all this stuff hits the fan. That's a false prophet. And he is really serious about that. And so the, the, the bingo word was conviction. 
if you don't have that, I question if a person has got the Holy Ghost. And I, you know what? I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I'm a saint. But when that conviction comes on me, boom, I got to repent. Yeah. I'm, I've said the majority of people didn't get saved biblically. Yeah. And that that has to carry some weight. Otherwise, this is a free for all. I mean, yeah. there's either absolutes and there's rules of engagement, or there aren't. But the majority of people did not get saved correctly. They got saved in a false way. That's that's what A. W. Tozer used to say. That's what Tozer used to say, Alan. He goes, I don't they know got saved, that. but they didn't get saved the right way. Yeah, see, I don't know anything about that. All here, the the New Testament teaches how you get saved. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is God, and that God rose him from the dead, and be baptized in water. You don't make those two confessions when you say the sinner's prayer. You don't make those two confessions when you accept Jesus into your heart. So without those two confessions, how do you? You know, I don't think people have gotten saved correctly. And so because they don't have because they haven't gotten saved correctly we have what we have a, a complete cockadoo to show and then they don't believe that they're supposed to be baptized in the holy spirit that they receive the holy spirit with that fake salvation see it's all it's all now a, a lie and they don't actually have remember john uh, paul meets these guys that were only baptized unto john which means right. water baptism to salvation. So you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. We haven't heard of this Holy Spirit thing. So Paul baptized them in the Holy Spirit. That's a separate event. And then they spoke in tongues. That's a separate event. But if they don't, but if you don't, if you don't come to salvation biblically, and then you don't have this separate event as described and explained in the New Testament, I sided with Lenny that you they're probably not saved and they don't have the Holy Spirit, which means none of this stuff makes sense. And it doesn't make sense. They don't know how to read the Bible. They don't understand the Bible when they do read it. And they don't believe in 80% of what they're supposed to be believing in. As far as what we're talking about, whether it's Torah or Charismatica or uh, the rules of engagement of marriage, divorce, raising a child, the fact that men, it's on you. You're supposed to give your life up for your wife as Jesus did the church. But God has so much more grace than that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, he has grace for your obedience, and he has grace for your sticking to the rules of engagement. But he doesn't have grace for your lawlessness. There's no grace in lawlessness. Oh, it's called Jesus. Get your act together and get saved. That narrow road has an uh, edge, man. And if you fall off that edge, you're going to fall and, far. And not only is it narrow, it's restrictive. It's like barbs are coming yeah. your way. It's a restrictive path, and few find it. Hey, man, I didn't write any of this stuff, man. Well, if that's your interpretation, Alan, you're interpreting it wrong. Okay. Okay. I will still enjoy my big, juicy fruit and uh, have at it. You live your life. You do you, boo. But as, for, as far as me and my house go, ha. We will continue to fear and serve Adonai. Yikes. That's, like, that's it. You hit it on the head, Chris. That was good. Conviction. So tell Conviction. us more. Tell us more, Chris. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, I mean, okay, so let's keep going in Luke 12. Check this one out. There is that passage about the light in your heart and letting your light shine, which I love. Maybe we talk about that later. Um, but this is one that we talk about a lot. So this would be in Luke 12. Uh, I think I'm in 12. Yeah, 12, verse 35. So let's assume we've asked for the Holy Spirit and received it, and we're continuing asking, and we're not giving up, and we're saying we're going to go on the narrow, barbed road, and we're not giving up. 
and we have received his light and opened our darkened heart to his light and now we're walking in the light and then he he then he says this Luke 12:35 say stay dressed for action what's that mean you got your armor you got your tools you got your accessories you're ready to go this is talking about it's cosplay after, baby cosplay yeah, you, yeah you've <laughs> done all this stuff and now stay proactive ready you're dressed for action which implies there is if if there's not action you're at least ready for it right stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning so that that's and hey whoa look at this we just we started with lamp stands today here we go right we started with the lamp stands feeding the menorah well, we started with the burning man <laughs> yeah oh well oh yeah that's true too man so, on fire so this is after you've asked for the Holy Spirit, pursued him, not given up, received the light in your hearts. You are burning lights before men. Now be proactive. Stay ready at all times. Stay dressed. Have your tools for action and keep your lamps burning. With and that flies, flame. Trimming your wicks. You're getting your oil and be like men who accepted the eternal covenant with their spouses who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. So I just thought it, it's, it's setting Luke is really rocking me like it hasn't before. And so nice. I, I just feel like now it's like proactive. Now you're storming the gates. Now you're ready. Now you're leaders. You're leading your home. You're leading yourself. And I, I, I'm just seeing this thread in Luke that is so practical, but it's also mysterious. Um, and it, we only be come to it through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Right. That's right. Staying obedient. That's really hard. Staying obedient. Because right before that, he talked about the rich fool. Did everything except. You have to count it all loss, man. You have to allow yourself to be broken on the rock of his salvation and yep. take up your cross daily. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Okay, if I do everything I did yesterday, I'm good. And I got to keep going forward. Just forward. Ever forward, further up, further in. You know what he also said in Luke 12? He says, if you don't confess me before man, I won't confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. And you know what that confession is? That's doing. That's the doing. That's the, uh, uh, like you said, staying proactive. That's being filled. That's uh, the fear of the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Check the check what this at. The, here's another thread that stay dressed for action. I just clicked on the footnote. It takes me to Exodus 12. He's talking about the feasts and what? In this manner, you <laughs> shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals Good. on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> That's it. Boing. <laughs> so even there, Jesus is speaking of Passover. He's making a referral to Old Testament commands. Wow. Yeah. Remember earlier, Alan talked about Joshua. They took the dirty garments off and they put the nice ones jo on. Joshua the priest, yeah. Joshua the priest, they put the clean garments on. Yeah. yeah all yeah. this ties in all the way to that. Oof. The priest, priest of the house. <sighs> Time to. Those garments get so sparkling that even the bleach can't get them as white as what they saw on the mountain. Yeah, Gideon. they're the Passover. They're eating in haste because why? He's he's saying, "Be ready, be prepared, because I'm bringing judgment." Oh, man. I'm bringing judgment, so it's coming, so be prepared. So if Jesus is talking about it in Luke 12, he's saying be prepared because there's going to be judgment. He's talking about 
him coming home from the wedding feast and being ready. Yeah. Gideon just slaughtered four pagan kings that were actually Nephilim killers were actually involved with Nephilim. I forgot what it was. It's been a while since I've mentioned this. And um, so when he's he's encountered by four pagan kings and, and they and he goes, Hey, uh, have you seen this this guy? And he goes, Yeah, he looked like you. Sons of kings. And they go, Well, that was our brother. So now you're gonna die. And he had his son like with a butter knife, couldn't get it couldn't captivate him. But the the point of that is they look like kings. They dress, he looked like you, sons of kings, based on their appearance, based on their countenance, based on their clothing, based on the whole package. And that is what we will look like, and that's what we will be looked at like, and that's how they will see us if we do these things. You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical Antidotes for the Modern Man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.